yesterday, um, I set some stuff up. Uh, where I where I left off yesterday was um, uh, calculating block types, um, and and I had just gotten things back to the point where we had uh, feature parity with the original implementation of everything that only had one block type. Today, I'm going to be doing a lot of things, but one of the things, the first thing I'm going to be doing, the thing that I'm going to be doing in this video is switching to a new data format to store everything in. Um, this is because the format that I output needs to be transparent and flexible enough that people can do all of these operations with it. And if it's not flexible enough that people can pass it between programs and and append it and like send it over a rest request if it's not flexible enough to handle all of that stuff then i've basically failed at making an end data format and if it is flexible enough to handle all of that stuff it should be flexible enough for me to use internally uh, so I want to be using the same format internally that I'm eventually going to output when this is, is run. There are a couple of things that this data format needs to be able to do. It needs to be able to multiple, multiple sort of uh, graphs of documentation need to be able to be merged together. Um, because you're going to be running this on multiple pages and maybe even multiple directories. Maybe maybe you're generating a site that's pulling in documentation from three projects. And uh, so you need a way to basically merge this stuff together. It needs to be very, very flexible. Um, it also would be nice if it can handle some kinds of errors, do some some logging. And this is where it actually does make sense to have utils, that, that you could have a util that you pass into graphs and it merges those graphs together, things like that. So graph generation, I may not want to do through any type of, of utils, um, but I may want to actually expose them for the idea of like merging pages together, things like that. So I'm going to switch the data format um, and then either in this video or in the next video, I'm going to be rewriting these tests to use the new data format um, and expanding them out. And then I'm going to be coming back and looking at some of these code blocks. So what is the new data format going to look like? First of all, let's turn these off. Suit.test false. So all of these will just fail nicely without any problematic stuff. And I can come back and fix this all later. Let's just make this full screen. There we go. So, what is this format going to look like? Uh, well, uh, it needs to be serialized. It needs to be a. Um, it needs to be something that I can just call JSON two string on it and JSON parse. It needs to still be indexable. Uh, so you still need to be able to look up nodes with O of one lookup time. Um, and it needs to be very expandable. You should be able to come into this and append a whole bunch of extra stuff onto it. Um, maybe I'll even expose some line types to add properties to things, although I'm not sure how useful that would be. Here's the format that I'm thinking of is um, something that should look a little bit like this.
So, uh, everything is indexed. I no longer have an array in here. Everything is going to be indexed. Um, I was very hesitant about doing this initially because, like, how do you handle IDs that aren't provided? So, like, if I if I had a second comment in here that was How would that get handled? And the answer is you just do uh, process.hr time. Um, yes, occasionally you will get conflicts there. Very rarely. Um, most of the time, like 99.9% .9 of the time, it would be an extraordinary coincidence if you got a conflict there. And you could solve that conflict just by regenerating your documentation. So I should have some checks that are like, hey, if this is if this is two IDs that are in conflict with each other, maybe maybe we give you an error about that. But it's also not like conflict resolution wouldn't need to happen anyway, because if you were joining two graphs together, the IDs you manually specify those are quite likely to have conflicts, and that problem would always exist even if I didn't give everything an ID. Um, but so basically, you'd have like some kind of like blah 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 blah. Um, Something to the equivalent of process.hr time as your key, and that would just have a... Um, and maybe we prefix this. This is the other thing I'm thinking, that I should be able to tell the difference between um, a generated ID and a uh, non-generated ID. Let's just make this easier to read. Now, let's talk about links for a second. Um, no longer are we going to have circular dependencies. So let's say that second comment is joined to the first one. Let's say that this is at ID. In links in here, we're just going to put ID. And you'll notice this is an array. Like, so for very, very large documentation things, you might conceivably, what is this yelling about? Auto trimmed four characters. Oh, it's yelling about this. Um, you might conceivably like experience some slowdown from that when you're originally generating your documentation. It's not gonna be very slow though because Unless you have unless you have like thousands and thousands and thousands of things in here, it's just going to be really like the indexing there is not actually going to make that much of a difference. If it does, we can come back and change this over to be indexed. We could change this over to be something a little bit uglier but more performant. It could be like ID true or something like that. Then you could have O of 1 lookup time to see if two things are linked to each other. Um, for right now, I'm just going to leave it as an array. And if it becomes a problem later, then it becomes a problem later. Um, this, let's, let's just say var, get rid of the process to each time in here and, and, and plug this out. When you link something, both of them get linked. So I've got this down here. This is linked to uh, my my auto generated ID is linked to my manually entered ID and similarly that's linked back. So coming from anywhere, any node, you can get to any node that it's linked to or that it's linked to it, um, and it's a relatively simple operation actually to then change an ID or add a new ID to these lists or find or, or traverse this graph, even though at this point now it's completely flat. But the nice thing about it being completely flat is it's super, super readable. Um, this is the type of output that you could actually debug. You could actually look at this and, and, and just full-fledged debug it yourself.
And the only thing I'm really not sure about is whether or not these should be arrays, but again, I'm just going to leave them for now. Uh, so let's talk about testing. Uh, these are deterministic, but uh, they are very difficult to test because you need to know at what precise moment the comment was generated, and you don't. Um, so there are a lot of ways you could get around this. The easiest way to do it um, is to just mock process dot h r h time. Um, so I can just run up like to the top or whatever. That's too high. Um, um, this is where I can just like throw a function inside here. That's like. All right, so that's just like a quick and dirty mock of process.hr time. So now I could come back down here, and I can basically just say like, okay, well, that's going to be, I don't know, that'll get mocked. Yeah, yeah, that'll get mocked. So I can basically just say var json equals time mocked. Cool. And now what this will return is, I don't have to worry about that. This will just be underscore zero. And this will just be underscore zero. Because what this key is, is not really like part of the, the API. Um, I mean, it can be. It can be something I guarantee. If it's if it's something as simple as just like, hey, I'm using, I'm using the HR time. I'm using the date string based on when, when this key was created. Um, that's not something I'm really worried about. Um, the other thing is, like, in terms of extension or something, um, you could maybe, like, prefix this with your own underscore, and that would, like, maybe mark it as temporary or something. You get into some kind of weird questions. Um, but this makes testing super easy because this is all just JSON. I can still do subset stuff if I want to add additional properties because, like, I do. It won't just be links and text. You'll have something like location equals line number. Um, and maybe one of the things you link it to is the source itself. So you're like, my source, yeah. There's, there's a lot of cool things that you could maybe do. Um, but yeah. So, uh, just to make things super, super simple. We're going to build out the initial JSON structure. And I'm not going to worry about linking things. I'm just going to worry about, like, is this getting generated the right way?
Cool. So that'll be good enough for a test, and then we can just do... Do I have those in the right order? I don't care about this test anymore. Previous.next is not something that I'm going to be testing this way. Initial stuff will always fail. The comment lines will be good to have around because maybe I can adopt it. Subset JSON graph. So what we really want is the expected actual. And for the actual, we really just want this to be pulled down. Cool. So I guess they have to be in the other order. Sure, whatever. Good enough. Let's get this passing and um that'll actually be a lot of progress if I can get this passing. make sure that everything is still failing correctly. Good, yeah. Okay, so right now I am building this kind of like massive graph structure thing down here um, with all of this crap right here. And I want to get rid of most of this. So this is calling build node. And what nodes returns is a location, a previous, and a text. I don't care about most of these, but text is fine. Um, links is something that I'll add later. So this all actually looks good, leading all the way down to... So this comment is outdated. Um, all the way down to like where we start to get like to this stuff. Where did we make the root? Oh, we just made it up here. This is no longer the root. This is the index. And it's just a thing. Much cleaner. Let's get rid of that. Um, we're setting previous, which I don't care about setting. Let's get rid of that for right now. That'll be something we set later. Um, we're going to build the node. And the only real thing we care about adding to this is the list. And we want to... If it has an ID, use auto generate. And in fact, as I'm thinking about this, like you'll need to, you'll will want to be able to like update system generated nodes. So like maybe you just always generate it an ID to start with, and each line of text is like an operation on that node, um, which is a very kind of nice consistent fluid like work through everything um, but for right now we won't worry about that uh, for right now for right now um, there is never going to be an ID because I'm not currently parsing those out
So instead, we're just going to say index It is HR time, right? Like, I didn't check this, but it should be. And what else am I doing here that I didn't need to? Newt.roads.list does not need to exist anymore. And what we are returning is no longer the root. It, we are returning the index. And that may actually be it. Ah, not quite. I want to actually get output for my tests. I don't want to be using subset. Subset should like throw an error if they're not. Well, I can I can do this. What the heck am I doing? Let's just make this slightly better just for a second. Like this will take all of like three minutes to, to fix. Um, because we're using this for tests, I want it to be expected actual. Right now it's like larger Is that how I do this, or do I want actual expected? I always get this. I kind of think I want actual expected. So I'll need to swap the order of these. That's certainly the way that I am uh, leaning whenever, like whenever I write this stuff out, that's the, the default way that I'm going and I don't care about anything else other than just making this fast. Um, so I actually want to throw a better error. Uh, your objects didn't match. And I don't really care about this too much. Uh, your objects didn't match. Okay, cool. I should get in the habit of using double quotes more often. Um, Error.expected equals expected. Error.actual. I believe this is the right format. I believe that this is the right format. So I can basically get rid of this assert.ok okay, and I can just call subset directly. Switch the order on these. Yeah, this is the, the better order that I want this to be in anyway. The actual, which is the JSON, and then what I expected it to be. JSON is a subset of the actual, so that reads more consistently anyway. Ah, yeah, that's what I wanted. That's totally what I wanted. Um, I do not have default lines set up. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Easy enough to fix. Cool. Um... What was the difference between these? Oh, links versus list. Uh, why was I calling this list? This should this should actually be links. Then what's the problem now? We've got links and text, and we've got links and text, and we've got location, previous, text, and links text and links. 
which means I probably have the order wrong up here. JSON is the actual expected. Uh, yeah, this is dumb. All right. I guess it was right before. So why was I always getting this wrong? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, I was, I was right. So now this is actually just kind of weird that this test is failing. Um, what? Comment, comment to. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff here. No, that's fine. This is something stupid that I'm just missing. Text. Links, links are both arrays. Oh, is it treat those arrays as separate instances? That would be dumb if that was the case. That would be very, very dumb if that was the case. I would need to find, no, but I've done this before. This can't be the reason. Oh, come on. Good, good. I was going to say. That's still failing, though. Why? Then I, then I must have this order backwards, right? What exactly is the problem? Oh my goodness, what the heck? That should be true. That should also be true. All right. That is not the case. It is larger. That's what I originally thought it was. So what's the deal? Crud. This is the most annoying type of debugging where it's just like this crap. True, false, true, cool, 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 and then we get down to a random error. Yep, all right, no, I got it. It was being stupid. I forgot I don't parse out strings. Um, like I don't trim strings after the, the initial thing. I trim the end of them, but I don't trim the, the beginning. All right. Uh, so this should be test passing. Um, and that means that we are officially in the new data format, um, except for linking, which I will, uh, go take a quick break and then come back and do what? Oh, no, it is actual expected. Bigger and then smaller. Crud. I don't want to think about that anymore. 
I just want to, like... All right, cool. Okay, good. Fine. Uh, I'm going to stop this video. I'm sure it's been at least 30 minutes. Um, and I'll be back, and we'll deal with linking.